Hey there, good morning. This is Herb Shapiro with the uh, Dr. Vax channel. You know, 3D printing does not sustain you. You still need to eat. So on this episode, we're going to talk about how to use the parts that are sold for wood turners. People that use lathes to make items out of wood. In this case, the parts for a pepper grinder and a salt shaker. And we're going to learn how to 3D print a functional, usable pepper grinder. Stay tuned and let's learn something together. Okay, let me uh, put my uh, breakfast aside now. And uh, let's take a look at this pepper grinder. Uh, the pepper grinder is made of two parts. There's a top section and a bottom section. We'll talk about these beautiful prints in just a moment. And it's combined with a series of parts that um, I purchased from PSI Woodworking Products. PSI Woodworking is a company that specializes in parts for wood turners, people that turn pens, uh, this pen, the metal parts of this pen came from a kit from PSI Woodworking. And um, this particular kit is a kit to make a pepper grinder on the bottom with a salt shaker on the top. So let's look at what's in this kit. This is the actual grinding mechanism. This goes all the way through both sections. Uh, with a screw on the top for tightening the grinder. Then we have a set of instructions. We'll look at those in a little bit more detail in a moment. We have the top cap and a bottom plate to hold the grinder in place and some small screws, which we will be using. I'm going to put that over here so we don't lose it. And this is actually the bottom of the top section. Um, and we'll see how that is assembled together. Okay, let's turn to the instructions for a second and we'll blow these up larger on the screen. Now, most of these instructions, you can follow the exact same way, except you're skipping the step of turning a block of wood on a lathe and instead you're going into a CAD program. I use Tinkercad and designing the parts for your grinder salt shaker. The key is here in the middle, you'll see a assembly instructions, but more importantly, in the bottom section here, you'll see the dimensions you must meet. So you'll see the size of the interior dimensions, the size of the dimensions where the top plate screws into the grinder, the sides of the dimensions for the bottom grind mechanism. Now these are all in inches. I converted them to millimeters because I just find millimeters easier to work with in the 3D printing environment. On the back side of this instruction manual, you'll see some instructions for putting the wood block on a lathe. We can ignore those. But then if you look at the assembly on the bottom, we're going to follow those exactly. Okay, let's turn to Tinkercad for a minute and take a look at the design of the two parts. You'll see the top section and the bottom section. I'm going to ungroup these now so you can see that they are just basic geometric shapes stacked one on top of the other. Then I created a cylinder the size of the internal bore, the internal dimension. I made that a hole. I centered that with the Align tool. The Align tool, once you use Tinkercad a bit, will become your favorite tool. And then I regroup them. And when you regroup them, they come together as a single object that you can then export as an STL and print. Now let's assemble this together. This print was printed as a proof of concept. I printed this with a one millimeter nozzle, 
on my Monoprice MP10, basically a, a CR10 clone that I've upgraded to use a one millimeter nozzle. I replaced the Bowden tube with a Capricorn tube and the extruder, the component that pushes the filament with an all metal extruder. And I use it for making very quick prints. So this print printed in about three and a half, four hours or so. This print was printed on my Prusa i3 MK3. It's printed in one of my favorite filaments. This filament I buy on Amazon. It's very inexpensive. I think it's 23 or 24 dollars. It's made by CC3D China. At least that's what was on the label. You can uh, go into Amazon, look for CC3D, and you'll see a whole range of filaments. Um, it's a remarkable filament because it prints very shiny. Um, it, uh, you can see the layer lines a little bit, um, but it generally produces just a beautiful, beautiful print. However, because this was printed at a traditional layer height of 0.2 millimeters, this was at 0.4, this had 15% fill, this had 10. Um, between all of those changes, this took about nine hours to print. So I'll very often use my one millimeter nozzle printer to print things very quickly, just see if the sizes work out. In fact, this came out quite nice. Um, if you were to sand this a bit and paint it, this would be a beautiful functional piece. One of the other reasons this prints faster is I use less walls. Because I'm using a one millimeter nozzle, I generally only use two walls, whereas with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, I use three to four walls, depending on the print. Okay, let's put this together. So the first step is, this is going to assemble like this. We're going to take and put the bottom of the top section in. That goes in just like this. But now we need to screw this in place. So salt's gonna go on the top. We're gonna put a little lid on here and we have a salt shaker. So we have to screw this in place. In order to screw this in place, I need pilot holes. So I'm going to use a cordless Dremel tool with a very small bit on the end. And I'm going to drill some pilot holes here. Just a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to take the screws from this package. Um, this is one of my favorite tools. This is a little magnetic tray that I bought at Harbor Freight, I think for five bucks. And it's the per perfect place to put screws you don't want to lose because it's magnetic, they stay in place. So we're going to take and now insert these screws. And one of the reason it is important to have a minimum amount of fill at least is because we are screwing into this. So we need something for the screws to bite into. This is plastic, so you do not want to over tighten and there's no reason to over tighten in this particular case. There are three screws here. We'll see these go in quite easily. This plastic is quite hard on the surface though. So if you did not drill a pilot hole, it probably, you probably would have trouble. Um, you might be able to use a small nail and a hammer to make a, a small hole to get started. But I find drilling a pilot hole with a Dremel tool, if you have one, is just a easy way to get going. So effectively, now we've made the top part of our salt shaker. This is going to go on the top here. And the nut is going to hold this in place. So we're effectively done with the top part. We do have, uh, I know a lot of people take joy in pulling this plastic off various parts. Here's our chrome top. Now, this is gonna go together like this. And when it's assembled, there is a square opening in this rod. It goes on the square rod here, and that causes the grinder to turn. So the screw is going to go on the top, 
and this is going to be assembled just like this. So now let's put the bottom in. Okay, we now have put together our pepper grinder. We're going to put the top on. This screw is used to adjust the grind by making it tighter. You will make a finer grind and looser. You'll make a looser grind. And we are all set. We've now built a second uh, salt shaker. Um, this one is in this beautiful, beautiful uh, gold, the CC3D China Gold. And we've combined together the components from a woodworking kit made for people using lathes. Now these woodworking sources, like PSI Woodworking, um, have a wide range of components. Uh, if you wanted to uh, 3D print the handle for a knife. You could buy the knife blade. You can buy uh, the metal parts of a spoon, of a fork. You can buy components for pens. And I'll be experimenting with 3D printing pens. Um, and there are toys, there are keychains. So there are lots of ways to combine these components designed for the woodworking community with your 3D printer. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. If you did, if you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. If not, please leave a comment about how I can do better. Subscribe to the channel. Share it with people you know, people in the woodworking community, people in the maker community, people in the 3D printing community, and let's continue to learn things together.